there and welcome to yourinspirations.com. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the hashtag naps crochet blanket. This is a very simple blanket to stitch because it's primarily single crochet, but I want to take a couple minutes and go over how to easily do the color work so that you can try this blanket without having to worry about techniques that you don't know. To make it, we're going to need a crochet hook and we're going to use Karen Simply Soft in natural and charcoal heather. Now on the pattern, we have the written instructions on the front page, but on the second page, we have this chart. Now, if you've never worked with charted stitches before, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. But in the interest of ha not having this video take 14 hours, I've made myself a little cheater chart. <laughs> it just has the S on the end and the hashtag at the beginning. This way, I can show you a couple of rows without taking all day. So, I have followed the directions on my pattern, or in this case for my little swatch, and I have done the bottom of the blanket in the charcoal heather. Now, looking at my chart, this is my first row, so I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to read from this side to this side, and I'm going to need eight of the gray stitches, seven off white, nine gray, three off white, four gray, three off white, five gray. Remember, your chart will be much bigger. I'm just using this small one in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch now. To get my second color started, all I'm going to do is take a fold of the new color and leave that six to eight inch tail hanging. I'm going to weave that in later. Uh, there's no point in getting crazy about it right now. If I leave a long enough tail to weave in, that's the easiest. So I said I wanted eight gray, so I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on my last stitch, I began the single crochet in gray, but the last yarn over and pull it through, I'm going to do in the new color. So every time I change colors on this project, every single time, the last yarn over of the stitch in the old color, that last yarn over is going to be made in the new color. Now this stitch is going to look a little loosey-goosey just because I have that tail hanging. I'll tighten it up when I weave it in later. Now, because I'm going back and forth in rows, I need the color to travel with me. So for the next seven stitches, I'm going to use the off-white, and I don't need the gray, but when I need the gray, it's going to be over here, so it has to get there. So I'm going to stitch right over it. So using the off-white and stitching over the gray, and I want to tighten that last stitch up just a little bit, I'm going to make seven of the off-white stitches, but I'm going to work right on top of the gray yarn. So one, two, remember I tension my yarn a little differently than many of you do. I'm aiming for speed and accuracy here, so I'm going to tension it my way. You, of course, will tension the yarn the way that you do. One, two, three, you see the old yarn, I'm working right over it. So there's my hook going under the two legs of the stitch and also around the traveling yarn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I said seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. On my seventh stitch, on the next stitch is going to be gray and I have to go back to gray. So I'm going to begin the stitch in the old color, which in this case is off white. Insert my hook under yarn over and pull it up. Now I'm going to let go of the off white and I'm going to finish that last stitch in the old color with the new color. So there's my seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next thing I have to do is nine gray. Once again, the next time I need the off-white is going to be way over here, so I'm going to stitch right over the unused color to make sure it winds up where I need it to be. So I'm going to give it just a little tug, not too tight, but I want that stitch to be the same gauge as the stitches on either side. I'm going to work in the gray, and I'm going to now make nine gray. One, two. This is actually a little easier to see because the yarn I'm stitching over is a different color than the base yarn. Three. So remember, I'm putting my hook in the stitch and under the unused yarn. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, don't want to finish that ninth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wanted nine, so I'm going to begin the stitch in the old color and then drop the old color and pick up the new color. Now I'm going to give it just the least little tug. I want it to lay nice and flat here. If I pull it too tight, you see how the stitches pull up and that will make it very uh, roughly and uneven, so I don't want that to happen. But I also don't want it so loose that that uh, old stitch, that last stitch in the old color is too loose. So I want to give it a little tug so it lays very neatly along the edge of the work that I've already done. So I'm going to pull up the new color, which is off-white. Give just the gentlest little tug on the gray. Now I'm going to make three off-white, one, two, Remember on the third, I'm gonna bring the new color up. So three, start in the old color, pick up the new color. All right, and I'm going to work over the white now. And I'm going to do four gray, one, two, oops, three, and here's my fourth one, so once again, I'm gonna begin it in the old color, finish it in the new color. Now, three more off-white, making sure to cover up that gray as I go. Two, three, and then five gray. Oops, once again, gotta remember to uh, do that last yarn over and pull it up with the new color. But again, as you saw, I just accidentally finished it with the wrong color. It was just as easy to just pull out that last yarn over and start with the next color. Now, when I'm at the end of my row of my chart, when I'm at the end of this hashtag, I don't have to work over the off-white yarn because the next time I need it is going to be right up here. It's going to be right over. So for after I get to the last stitch of that hashtag, I'm going to just go ahead and leave the natural hanging. All right, so that is the end of my first row of my little abbreviated chart right here. Now. I'm getting ready to do the next row. I need to read the chart from left to right, correct? Because I ended with hashtag on this row, so I'm going to have to begin with hashtag. On the other hand, I'm still working from right to left if I'm right-handed because I turn the work at the end of the row. So I'm working from right to left if I'm right-handed like I've been doing, but now I have to read it from left to right. So um, for the hashtag, I wanna say it's easier almost to look at the stitches you need to stitch in relation to the ones you've already done. I could count this whole row out, and in fact I did. But for this hashtag, for example, it's really easy to look at the chart and know that if the stitch is gray, I'm going to work in gray, and if the stitch is off-white, I'm going to work in off-white. So I could count five gray and then three off white and then four gray and then three off white and move on from there. But I find it more intuitive to just look at it and know that I'm going to stitch right on top. So I turned my work, I'm going to chain one. Chain one does not count as a stitch. So one, two, three, four, Five, I'm going to begin in the gray, I'm going to let go the gray, I'm going to pull the off-white up and pull it through. So the only place that I'm going to see yarn traveling from lower to higher is right here 
at the end of the row, it's gonna happen on the other side too. But one of the things I want you to notice and the reason we have stitched over the other colors is there's no float. A float is what you call uh, the unused yarn when the unused yarn travels outside of the stitches and floats are really annoying. They get caught in your fingers. Um, the alternative to having floats, of course, is to use bobbins, but then you have 12 million ends to weave in and that's kind of tedious too. So I really, really like the way that we are carrying the unused color along with us. So it's always available when we need it, but there are not 12,000 ends to weave in. So now I know I have three off white. I'm going to stitch over the gray. One, two, three, and remember, last yarn over in the old color is in the new color. So there's my three off white. I'm going to now work in the gray, one, and I'm carrying the off white with me, two, three, four, drop the gray, pull the off-white up, tighten that just the least little bit so it's not sloppy. One, two, three, and I'm going to switch back to the gray. just the least little tug. Now, this is where life gets interesting because I was working in this direction and I knew that working on the hashtag that all the colors were the same. So I've just finished the second, going that way, the second leg of the hashtag. So now I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gray. So I can count seven gray and then 11 white and then six gray or I'm stitching along. I can say in my brain, I want to start two cream before the row below and extend two cream after, and then just gray till the end. So really, some people will prefer counting and doing the math, and some people will prefer a more visual representation. The other thing I wanna to suggest to you, if you're the type of person that uses a ruler to cover your chart or another piece of paper, Instead of covering up the rows that you've done and working your way up, it's a lot easier to cover up the rows that you have not done because that way you can see the stitches you're about to make in relationship to the stitches you've already done. So if you like to cover up the chart and only see one row at a time, it's much easier to cover the unworked stitches than to cover the worked stitches. All right, so I'm going to keep going now. Pull a little more yarn up. All right, so whether I'm going to just go two before or whether I'm counting and I know that I have to count seven, I'm going to work in the gray, across, and I'm going to work over the off-white. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, here we go. So I know the next two there have to be off white. So I know that this is my last stitch. I'm going to start it in the gray and finish it in the off white. Now I know I have 11, or again, I can keep stitching until I go two past. Whoops, made a mistake here. What I wanna make sure I do is, is work over, over the unused color. So I'm just gonna keep cruising across. Now don't worry about this tail, like I said, at the very end when everything's all done, 
I'm gonna go back and weave that in with a tapestry needle. That's not a big deal. All right, so that's nine. Once again, if I'm counting, I know that I need to have 11. Or if I'm working visually, I know I want to make two more off-white after the previous off-white. Two. Now, I'm going to work in gray to the end. Do I need to take the white with me? In this case, I'm going to say yes, but only for a couple of stitches. So looking at my chart, there was row one, right by my thumbnail, we went that way. Here's row two, also by my thumbnail, we went this way. Now for row three, that off-white needs to be one stitch before the, uh, the row below. So in this instance, do I need to carry the white all the way down to the end of the row? I do not. But I am going to carry it just one stitch. So once again, let's make sure I did that last yarn over in the gray. And I'm going to go ahead and carry that off-white one stitch because I know that when I come back, I'm going to need it up here. And I don't want to travel it from here to here. I want it to travel just as little as possible. And now I can go ahead and work into, in the gray until the end. All right, turn the work. I'm going to chain one, or I would if I could find my yarn, there it is. <laughs> so remember what I said, we're going to go one before the one below. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna make five gray and then begin the white. So I traveled the white yarn over one to make sure that it's where I need it to be. One. Oops, there we go. Two. Three, four, here's gonna be five. I'll begin in the gray, let the gray go, bring the white up, it's right there waiting for me. Finish it in the off-white, give that gray just a little tug and now look on the wrong side. That's all you see is that teeny little bit of travel. And then I'm going to stitch across in the off-white and I know that I have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or again, I could just stitch along in the cream until I go one past the row below. Now, when I'm working on the big chart and not on my little cheater chart that I had, I want you to notice that some of the vertical lines are darker. This is to help you count the stitches. Sometimes it's really difficult to count and see where the stitches are going to go. So the heavy vertical lines make it easier to count. So that's how you do the color work. When I get to the very end where I finish my last row, whether I'm on this side or this side, I'm gonna say it'll be on that side. I'm going to just clip and leave a six to eight inch tail of the white at the top of my hashtag like I did at the beginning. When the blanket is all finished and I have done the edging, I can take my tapestry needle and then just weave that back and forth. So. Can you see the other color when you're traveling? Yeah, a tiny little bit. You can see just the teeny little bit of the white peeking through. You can see a teeny little bit of the gray peeking through. But it's consistent throughout. This is absolutely the easiest way to do color work like this. And once again, it's a very, very simple project because primarily the stitching is in single crochet. So this makes it a great project for anybody to start with. So I hope you enjoyed us working on the hashtag naps crochet blanket. I hope you had a great time watching. I hope you have a great time making it and I look forward to seeing you again on another video.